Biotechnology. How many really understand what it means? Biotechnology is having a revolutionary impact on science, healthcare, ethics, and therefore, our everyday lives. Many people have referred to the last century as the century of the electron, and a lot of people are calling this century the century of biology. And biotechnology is going to play a hugely important role in the advancement of medical technologies, life-saving medical technologies, uh, in ways that we really today almost can't imagine. The industry has more than tripled in size since 1992, with revenues increasing from $8 billion that year to $39.2 billion in 2003. Even now, there are more than 370 new biotech drugs in development, targeting more than 200 diseases. Today, the biotechnology industry is at a unique moment in time. Global industry trends are moving toward increased competitiveness, both within the U.S. and abroad. The United States is the world's leader in the race to develop new drugs and therapies. There are three times as many biotechnology companies in the U.S. than in Canada, our closest competitor. U.S. firms earn more than 70% of the share of all global biotechnology revenues. What is the driving force behind this dynamic new industry? And are Virginians well positioned to play a role? Biotechnology holds not only a lot of promise uh, for uh, the future of human health care and environmental protection, um, as well as agriculture. Um, it's an industry that also uh, can pay significant economic dividends to communities in the state by creation of high-paying jobs, and jobs that, frankly, uh, are not likely to be the kind of jobs that are going to be outsourced. If we can create the kinds of jobs uh, in biotechnology and have them firmly rooted in Virginia, these aren't the kind that are likely going to be sent offshore like we've seen with the IT industry. In the increasingly competitive climate in growing and attracting life science business clusters, Virginia continues to receive high marks. Virginia was ranked in the top 12 states that have both large employment bases in the biosciences and are specialized in at least one industry subsector. There are more than 200 biotechnology, pharmaceutical, equipment, and medical device companies based in Virginia, mainly clustered around universities in Blacksburg, Charlottesville, Richmond, Norfolk, and Northern Virginia. More than half of the companies, 52%, are focused on developing therapeutic products and 14% on diagnostics. The focus of the remaining companies is divided among areas of concentration, such as biodefense, bioinformatics, and agricultural biosciences. Can Virginia compete? With its resources, available human, intellectual, and financial capital, and recent governmental initiatives to advance the industry in the state, the question isn't whether Virginia should strive to become a biotechnology leader but rather, how can it afford not to? Virginia's life sciences sector should play a critical statewide role as partner in innovation to multiple industries, customer to many businesses, creator of livelihood for many in the state's workforce, and contributor to the local, regional, and statewide economy. There are many things that a local government or state government can do to facilitate biotech companies starting one is to ensure that there is favorable tax and structure in place, uh, that there are incubator spaces, so most starting biotech companies can't afford to build a building from scratch. It has to be suitably equipped lab space that they can lease or rent. Many other things, such as a trained labor force and a nice place to live, Virginia already has those natural blessings. Over the long term, it is absolutely indisputable that better medicines lead to lower costs because the individuals who are treated and treated well are able to be more productive. This is a strategic decision for this nation. Are we able to increase our health and thereby increase our productivity? So investing in those jobs is not just putting money to waste so it will never come back. It's actually investing in what is tremendously important for this nation. The following state-level priorities share a common focus on the following issues. Providing for increased funding of public research institutes. Finding vehicles for addressing the financing needs of the industry. And supporting facility and human capital needs of the industry at all stages of development. 
originally identified by the Governor's Advisory Commission to develop a statewide biotechnology strategy in 2002 and 2003. These have been adopted by VA Bio and the private sector as the key actions which Virginia must undertake if the state is serious about being a competitor. We want to be a player and, and the goal of the advisory board was for Virginia to be among the top 10 biotech states. In order to do that, we need to have more financial capital available to life science and startup companies. We need to have uh, better facilities that, that the private sector will not build the specialized facilities that are needed at the beginning for some, some of the companies. We need intellectual property better transfer from our intellectual, from our uh, higher education institutions. And we need uh, what I really like, and we need human capital. We need star faculty. Biotechnology companies often require highly specialized and expensive space in order to develop commercial products. Furthermore, the private sector is reluctant to finance wet lab and specialized space buildouts for biotechnology companies without lengthy lease terms. There is a shortage of wet lab space in the mid-Atlantic area, and especially wet lab capable space for smaller and growing companies. Uh, and they need these highly sophisticated kinds of space, and the only way, again, we're going to get that is if the Commonwealth jumps in and helps with the financing, the loan guarantees, uh, to be able to provide the space, this product. Biotechnology is a capital-intensive industry, and policies must encourage investment, not limit the freedom of capital to move into the sector. And Virginia still needs to continue to attract capital into the state, and uh, it needs to do that uh, in conjunction with the venture capital firms, because you need not only the capital, but the expertise within those venture firms to build these companies. And I think there's a lot that Virginia can do, and I think uh, given the strong technology base and the growth of the industry in general, uh, Virginia should be able to attract that capital, but that's something we need to continue to do. The unique biotechnology company life cycle, where the lag between R&D and commercial viability is long and expensive, increases the need for targeted tax credits. Tax credits are not an incentive for early stage biotechnology firms who due to extensive research and development costs often spend years generating net operating losses before becoming profitable. Transferable tax credits helps decrease the burden on entrepreneurs, investors and emerging companies. The ability of smaller non-profitable biotechnology companies to trade earned net operating loss or NOL deductions for needed operating capital works to encourage continued innovative research. A number of states have R&D tax credits. Um, some make these transferable, uh, allowing firms to carry over net operating losses. Some things that help the firms with capital, but it isn't really giving them, giving them money directly. 30 states allow companies to carry forward NOLs. Indeed, furthering scientific discovery and technological knowledge into useful, marketable products is the prime driver of the industry. For every $1 million in research funding spent in Virginia, more than 30 full-time and part-time jobs are created, according to the U.S. Department of Commerce. As Virginia's life sciences industry matures, sustainable competitive advantage increasingly depends on how the state, its educational institutions, and companies develop, train, and manage the CEOs of tomorrow. To attract and retain the caliber of people required for a thriving biotechnology industry, the Commonwealth should expand its eminent scholars program at Virginia's research institutions. The environment is a very competitive environment for the states uh, who are trying to attack, uh, to attract biotech companies. Uh, they need to realize that uh, the neighboring state is doing as much or more than uh, as a competitive from a competitive standpoint. So. Taking proactive steps with the legislature and with the business community to make sure that uh, those interests of biotechnology are being embraced. To achieve a preeminent position for the 21st century and beyond, an uncommon partnership is required between our state leaders and the private sector, one that embodies creative problem solving and represents bold new thinking. Working together, Virginia's life sciences community will grow, bring prosperity to the region, and improve the lives of people throughout the nation and the world. Can we not afford to take risks and take time and invest in the health of people? And if it takes longer, 
and if it takes more money and you're saving more lives, then isn't it worth it? And it takes intellect, it takes thought, it takes families taking their risks to do this. You have scientists whose families start up small companies who are willing to take the risk, willing to get the chance to save a life, to develop a new medicine. I believe those are absolutely uh, laudable things to be doing. Those are the kind of things that we should be doing in America, and that's what government should be thinking about.